Hey everyone, I'm Summer Hill and I'm here with artist and creator Mark Bravo and Girlfriend 5. Thank you all so much for having me. Yes, no problem. Thank you. Yes, no problem. So you're on stop number eight of your tour in Washington, D.C. We're at the pie shop. How are we feeling before we get started today? I'm feeling great. Not nervous, but anxious because yeah. I care so much. Um, I'm excited to see everyone else's performances. I'm excited to do my longest set that I've ever done. Oh, wow. For the people. And um, we have like a play style. So, yeah. So, okay. yeah. Feeling good. What does it feel like to be on stage? Like, what how, what kind of preparation do you need before you get out there? Uh, definitely my hair done. I need some food. I need um, some aloe vera, some water, okay. some alkaline or coconut water, something like that. So, for my hydration. I typically need to play like these there's three songs that I play in the car on the way here. There's BB King by Drake and Lil Wayne. Okay. I really like that song. There's a song by that Larry Williams. It's like a 70s song called How Can I Believe? Mm. Which I really like. And then um the third is called PP One. And it's like it's like sounds of a childhood, like if you were in like a crib and mm -hmm. you see like things dancing around and stuff. Okay. It's like that, but like it's, it's a warped version of that. So okay. It it calms me. It takes me back to that place. So it puts you in the right mental space. Exactly. Oh, that's I right. like to perform in a childlike state where mm. I just have fun and take risks and don't really care. And I'm naturally an entertainer, so I like being up there. Mm -hmm. I find that's when we're our best selves, when we're like at our childlike self. Right, exactly. But you said you like to get your hair. Please explain to me what's going on here. What you getting done with your hair? Um, so this is, <laughs> it became a staple for me. We actually did it, I think, for one show because Roddy does my hair and she couldn't do my hair mm -hmm. in time for the show. So we're just like, let's just do it on stage. Let's see what happens. And by the end of the set, I looked completely different from the beginning of the set. And um, it was really cool to experience because I had on a whole different outfit and everything. So it's like I changed personas for like the that later part of the set. Okay. So this is like your good luck. Yes. And the oh, people look forward to seeing it because I didn't do it one show and somebody told me like, yeah, how come you didn't sit down and get your hair done? Mm, so it just become the thing. Exactly. Well, that. well, your hair is beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. let's get into your background. You started creating beats in your basement at age 15 what sparked your interest into doing that how'd you get started um how'd you know that research my lovely <laughs> intern did some research for me okay. right. it's ginger yeah, shout out to ginger shout out to ginger because i started making music at 13 but i did actually start making my first beat at 15 mm. and uh, that journey for me was really cool i was the youngest in a group called the scumbag boys and I, I was like 15 they were 18 and we would tour and i would watch them tour we had like 10 people each person had a job and it kind of showed me what community and things are like mm. at that age so once i learned that skill that's something that became like an ability to me now i know how to run shows and do things like that but um yeah starting at such an early age made me seasoned yeah i wanted to be a child star mm. and um, that didn't happen which i'm so grateful for because you're just so naive you know? did you watch quiet on set yet no i have not watch it and then you're gonna be even more grateful that you want a child star because the way they did them kids uh -huh, yeah awful yeah. but what did you learn was the oh, most sure. important skill that you that you learned while creating mm. music that has helped you today moving with intention mm -hmm. and then having patience with that intention because as you're going on it will not feel like you're making progress mm -hmm. but you're if you're putting in work every day you are definitely making progress so just just knowing to keep going even when you don't see it because when that triumph does come you'll notice that all your hard work was worth it and how it played a role into it i feel like that's just a life lesson period mm -hmm. like that's yep. just helpful to know for life it definitely but i can is. see how that impacts your artistry as well mm -hmm. so you went to the university of maryland eastern shore yes i did <laughs> um, nah. yeah mm -hmm. so what made you choose to go there oh, that's an interesting story so i went to wesley college in delaware at first okay. and um you know i was doing my music there doing my thing i was about to take on music business as a major and then we did a tour stop there apparently something happened where my group threw a rock through the football team's window uh -oh. because the football team was saying um f them because they had a can i cuss yeah, I'm sure <laughs> but yeah so the football team basically they're saying f them though because they asked them for a jump or something because their car wasn't working okay so f them and the football team left and they threw a rock through their window and apparently they went to the last day of school to approach me about it. I wasn't there, but there's my group. So they approached me about it, and I ended up fighting a couple members on the football team. What? And um, I walked away getting Unscathed. the best of the situation yes, because right. I am trained. Okay. Um, so I was very young. Trained, trained in what? 
and martial arts. I do Shotokan karate. And I did that till I was 14, and then I started boxing. From wow. Mm-hmm. How has that, like, because I know learning that is like, it's, it's really for the mental, like, obviously for the physical aspect, but also for the mental aspect. How did yeah. that? Um, discipline, for mm-hmm. sure. And, you know, I was like four years old performing like a formation in front of like thousands of people at mm-hmm. a tournament. And I think that helped me with stage fright and like being able to perform under the big lights. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it helped me with that. It helped me with fear in general. Um, you move a lot. You move a lot better with more confidence when you know you could probably beat like 90% of the people in the room, for sure. Don't you have to like <laughs> say a disclaimer, like just so you know, I am trained. Or is that yeah, well, I mean, you don't have to say it, but they can kind of tell. I was like, you know, with people that are trained, they don't want to fight. It's like, yeah. I'm trying to say yeah. it. Like, <laughs> you don't want to take it there. And that's what ended up happening at, at Wesley. And, you know, we, you know, I handled my business, but then my mom was like, it's a whole football team. And mm-hmm. they may not take well that you handled that situation well. So because they already plotted on you the first time, we're going to send you over to another school. Mm-hmm. And my, my girlfriend at the time went to UMES. And I was okay. like, thinking about what school I wanted to go to. She was like, why not you think about my school? And right. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, <laughs> and I went to visit, and I was like, oh, it's lit here. I didn't know how lit it was at UMS, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to come here, and I want to go to an HBCU, so it was it was perfect for me. Nice. I've what never been to Eastern Shore, but I heard it's mm-hmm. so beautiful right on the water. Exactly, yeah, so over there by um, Ocean City, and there's a lot of hidden gems and national parks and stuff there oh, that you wow. wouldn't know about. Yeah, I used to just drive off campus and discover stuff. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Check cool. that out. Okay, so you're originally from North Carolina, right? Yes, I am. But raised here? I was raised here. I live, so I was born in North Carolina, mm-hmm. moved to Detroit. Oh, me too. Oh, for real? Yeah. yeah. I was in Canton. Okay. Like, I guess not Detroit, but Canton, Michigan is like a suburb yeah, of it. Yep. So, I was exactly. in Farmington Hills. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what that is, <laughs> but it's all right. <laughs> Um, so yeah, cause I was like three or four years old okay. at that point. Okay. So I saw a lot in like my adolescent years. So that's why I feel like different from people like that are like grew up here yeah, in a way. Yeah, that makes a difference. So by the time I moved here, I was about like, like five or six years old and I stayed here until about high school. And that's when I went to DC and I went to high school in DC. I went to Archbishop Carroll mm-hmm. and, um, yeah. And then I moved to, from there, that's when I moved to Delaware then Eastern Shore. Then I lived in D.C., had my own apartment out here for a little bit. And then, um, yeah, now I'm somewhere else that I will not just claim. Okay, mm-hmm. I fear. I understand. Uh-huh. I get it. I yep. totally get it. So uh-huh. how has the DMV impacted or influenced the music that you create? Hmm. That's a good question. I would say probably there's probably, like, things in my subconscious I don't even know about, like certain drum rhythms, uh-huh. Judy Dodo. And the way I project my voice in certain ways and certain words and stuff. So I, I haven't really taken the time to examine that, honestly. I, I have a style, I would say, that's more of like an older New York, Atlanta type of style, mm-hmm. like Erica Badu ish, like okay. that, that uh, wave of Jay Dillis. But um, yeah, I think I do a DC style of it, which is why it's like a never seen before thing that, you know, of course you grab from influences, but I have a style of my own. Mm, mm-hmm. I know that's right. So do you feel like all the places that you've lived contributed to that style? Yes, for sure. Um, I think I have like a certain Southern comfort, Mm -hmm. also gritty Detroit, but also DMV, cool fashion vibes. Um, Yeah, I think all of it ties into who I am. Mm -hmm. So how important, because I know this particular tour stop, there's a lot of DMV artists. So how important is it for you to put on local artists or to collaborate with local artists? That's a good question. No one's asked me that before. It's it's very important to me because I I was in a group, but I had to navigate a lot of things on my own and find out things the hard way. I didn't have much industry to tap into, so I was just started building it. I'm just like, we're just going to build industry, and then we'll all exist in here, and then everyone knows who we are after a while because we're going so hard with it. So um, I think for me, I just had to build a formula and build something that I knew would would work here for sure. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the industry. Do you feel like you've broken into the industry? Or is that a goal of yours? I think I'm creating my own industry. And I think as you do that, then people from you start to get a lot of looks and eyes from the actual industry because they want to bring you in and add your new ideas. Because a lot of people want to exist in the industry that already exists. But me, I want to contribute mm-hmm. to the future of where it's going because mm-hmm. people need innovators. They need the things that are going to be popular five to 10 years from now. And I think that's the type of wavelength that I'm on. I'm more of like a trendsetter influencer as well as an entertainer. But I think I'm more for the longevity of it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how I attract a lot of the attention I have because they're wondering how the hell I did all this independently. Right, Mm -hmm. right. Well, speaking of influencers, who are some of the people that you look up to that have influenced you? And I know that 
you say your mom is a heavy influence on who you are, but some mm. artists. Mm. Um, some artists that influence me from DMV or just in general? Just in general. Um, definitely. You can do both. Okay. In general and then specifically the DMV. Okay. Yeah. So definitely um, Erica Badu to me was like someone that just spoke to my soul when yes. I was just a kid. And it's funny when I was at her concert, she had like told us like that she was speaking to our generation oh. for that in a way. So that was really yeah. dope. Um, yeah, I would say Erica and, and her baby father, Jay, Jay Electronica. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite rapper. Yep. Um, he's... And those are the type of lanes I like to be in. Like, currency is another influence for me. Okay. Like, I don't want to be the biggest mega star, but I want to, you know, be able to maintain at a nice mid level to where I'm not too deep into the industry. I can still go to the store, but I can also sell out and pack out, mm -hmm. like, you know, a thousand person venue, whatever I want to go. I can travel overseas, but I'm still human. I still have a life, still take care of my family. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, let me think. Andre 3000. Um, Nas and Jay Dilla for sure. Um, Wale was a big influence too, growing up in the DMV as well. Um, he he kind of showed us that it's possible to, to right. come up with rap here because everyone was on a go go wave at that time. So, um, I think that's cool. Chance the Rapper was another one who like came up in the middle of the drill mm -hmm. scene. Everyone was Chief Keef and Glory completely Style different and style. G Herbo, yeah, he completely different him and big mensa came and they brought the love wave the love frequency so i think that's that's what influences me because i'm in the love frequency mm. i think time repeats itself so i think we're heading into the 70s because we just went through a drill era in a way and i think in like a silver rights type of era and i think that's what the 60s represented and they moved into the 70s and like i said time repeats itself so i think that's where i fit into that love wave I love that because I'm an old soul, so old mm -hmm. school music exactly. is my jam. That's my area. Mm -hmm. But you just mentioned traveling. I know that you're on tour right now. So tell me the best and the worst parts about being on tour. Oh, man. I As know. independent <laughs> artist, like, so I'm I'm the artist, but I'm also, like, the marketing manager. Mm -hmm. I'm also the stage director. Every hat. I'm also the... Um, I'm, I gotta help with security sometimes. I've had to watch the door of my own show. Oh my god! <laughs> like you never know, and it's like for me, I'm that type of like leader. I don't like to say boss. I'm the type of leader that I will set those examples of like you know, hey bro, I had to do this shit five years before anyone heard anything that I was ever doing. Like it's a it's a lot of time that you you gotta put into it. But the plus side is you know when everything comes together and you hear everyone had a great time and they and they thought your set was amazing and you know you had all those days of practice um it makes it all worth it it makes it makes those hard times worth it and i wouldn't rather do anything else and um yeah i just i just love it i love what i do i wanted to do this my whole life and here we are and it's gonna all pay off i mm -hmm. believe that for you yeah, i already have i just met all, I met all these beautiful people that believe in themselves and believe in my vision as well so it's it's just it's dope. It's so a dream come true. Like, you know, I've, I've gotten to the point where I've won my parents over and my family. Oh, good. Because they support it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> that is the dream. That is the, the lifetime goal. Uh, yes, parents. it is. Parents on board. Mm -hmm. Um. So out of your five singles on Life is Crazy, which one is most personal to you? It used to be... <laughs> East Side... No. Mm. It used to be Tango with the Zah. But now it's I don't owe you shit. Okay, how come? Tango with <laughs> Tango with the Zai was for me a song that I, you know, if you battle with addictions or certain things in your life, it's really about self control. It's like, you know, when you have that delicate dance with something you're addicted to, mm. that's what Tango with the Zai stands for. So that was something that I had to overcome is getting out of my bad habits in order to reach the goals I went to and have that self discipline. And um but I don't owe you shit. As of recent, you know, anyone who's come up in their hometown in a way can relate to this. But um, as you go, as you grow, a lot of people start to feel entitled or they start to right. feel jealousy or, you know, they may start to act a little different around you and they claim you're acting different. But it's just like, you know, bro, I'm, I'm the same. Right. They're expecting me to change because right. I have these accolades. So, um, yeah, I think I don't owe you shit definitely became the most personal to me at all of them. Mm. Okay, so if we think about all three of your albums, which what do you think is the overall message that you're trying to convey to your listeners? Have fun, take chances, and be yourself while doing it. I love that. That's what it stands for. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's get into the jewelry because I'm hearing it, I'm seeing it, it's looking good. Explain this to me, the rings, like everything. Tell me about it. Um, 
So I just, I'm a light. I'm a light being, and I like to shine um, in many ways. I'm an entertainer. I think our entertainers are like narcissists in a way, so mm. like to be seen. Mm. Um, so you call yourself a narcissist? <laughs> yeah, I think it's okay to, you know, you acknowledge certain facts, you know, in a way. Because I think we all, because if you, if you feel like people should come pay money to just have you, have you get on stage and sing some songs, you are a narcissist. But, okay. you know, you're delusional to a point where other people believe in it. <laughs> It's the delusion. Exactly, you right. You have to have that. You, you do. Yeah, I deserve money to get up here and sing these songs that I wrote in my basement. Yes. Y'all are going to come pay and see me. Yep. And you're going to do well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. That's exciting. Okay, so are so, you the yeah, freestyle like the type? <sighs> when I'm comfortable. like. Are you comfortable right now? <laughs> oh, it's a freestyle? Not before, so. Mm -mm. <laughs> I like that, though. But now, so we'll, you'll probably hear us freestyle throughout the night and stuff. Like, uh, we have a viral video that <laughs> of Blaze singing about grapes because we were arguing oh, about grapes cool. with each other. <laughs> and we were going bar for bar about the grapes. And, you know, so I like That's to do cute. things in a natural setting and freestyle that way. And when I'm comfortable, it's cool. On the spot is weird for me. I know. It's, it's like dance. It's like, dance. right, exactly. Dance. I'm like, I don't know. I could, but I just rather. I feel it. I feel it. I mean, you got to save that creative energy for right. a few minutes on stage. Yeah, if it was just another day, I'd have... Yeah. So, okay, I saw you have your music video. Tell me the process for um, filming that music video. Like, what are the types of things that you're thinking about? What are you highlighting? Was it the milk yeah, music milk. video? Okay. Um, oh, that was a day in the life. That was a tour stop, like, that whole day. Mm. So we went to get our nails done. We had breakfast. We went to Selena. Shout out. To Selena, they gave us four or five free hotel rooms. I oh, know that's right for all of the performers, and um, yeah, so we went there and we got ready for the show. We had rehearsal. It showed me being in my um in my hotel room, going out to get my water, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it just showed a day in the life of literally don't milk it, be you, and film that. And if people find it interesting, then keep doing it because you're worth something. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I love that. So, how has your life changed since becoming a um popular artists with these different brand deals and companies you get to work with that are offering you things what's been your favorite um like the like in a good way that my life is yes. from all of these things yeah. <laughs> um i would say just knowing i have that support and that backing like mm -hmm. i know if i have a show half blade's gonna be here mm -hmm. i know if i have a show drinking problems they're gonna definitely help us out we, have, we just work with dos amigos seafood it's really cool to actually go try the stuff too because we yeah. had like with dos amigos they have a cannabis part too and we had to go try all of their flour and we also got to eat seafood it was really cool mm -hmm. and it's um it's another place too called um eat it up or something around here it's like a breakfast place and they invited us to get some breakfast so it's it's really cool to be able to get paid and whether it's money or time or energy for my accolades that i've grown and for people to find me valuable enough for me to build up these numbers um it feels it was really good having like get, being able to get sponsors and stuff like mm -hmm. that and i'm a marketing a uh, major that's what oh, okay. i have my degree so in so yeah, you yeah know this kind of yeah. stuff so being able to apply and watch it work yeah mm -hmm. that's cool so my last question for you mm -hmm. i really enjoyed talking you, with you today but i know you got stuff to mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. um you're surrounded by so much love i've seen it in this room with just all the people that have been so excited to see you mm -hmm. how important is it to have such an uplifting community as an independent artist and is there anyone you want to shout out Ooh, so that's it's so important and as an artist you're gonna go through non-genuine people genuine people that stay for just a season and then they have to get back to their lives like it'll be a lot of things that you'll have to go through but i would say um just trust the process is going to work keep finding people keep trusting people no matter what you know don't be too trusting but just keep finding the right people to trust and i would like to shout out um five Takaso, half blaze um anyone that's been on the journey we got unique my, my tour chef chef sticks um slash my um consultant um yeah my mom my dad uh, my little brother my older brother he used to critique my music all the time mm -hmm. i'll come in he's like you need, trash. Trash. <laughs> you need people but, who do that and i swear because i would go in there for five more days and i'm like i bet we're here 17 right, songs. right exactly. tell me at least one of these and you know what i mean right. and it's like eventually yeah, i made 17 good songs in a row versus one or two that used to be good so you know yeah it's just about that growth so just shout out to my family for supporting me shout out yah yahuwah elohim for blessing me with all these gifts and being able to give me the opportunity to spread my talents and spread my wings to the world. Yeah, well, thank you for spreading joy in your talent tonight. We're so excited to see you perform, and thank you for this conversation No with problem, me. and thank you, yes, too. We appreciate you. Of course. Of course. Uh, no Good doubt. luck. Y'all keep supporting Summer as well. 
I came across her page. I think someone was on Creative House page and showed me. That's it, Creative House. Creative House page, yeah. That's who showed me. And I was like, oh, she's really, like, pure. I like this. I'm like, I like... I like um, a certain pace, mm. I would say. So I think you, you fit that really well in the show today. I think we had a great interview. So y'all keep supporting what she Thank does. You. Sure. Thank you. She so more, more of us again. Yes, no problem. definitely. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Peace and love, y'all. <laughs> Yay. Okay, that was good. That, yeah, I good. enjoyed that conversation. Cool. Yes, me too. Okay, well, good yeah. luck tonight. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much.